15 months after completing her platinum doublet, unfortunately, she presented with increased abdominal discomfort and distension. She was found to have multifocal recurrence at that time with a significantly elevated CA125. Her test in the time of primary diagnosis showed that she was BRCA wild type and she had no significant abnormalities in her tumor. Unfortunately, she presented approximately 15 months after completing her platinum doublet with increased abdominal discomfort as well as early satiety and bloating. CAT scan at that time showed a, wide, a multifocal disease within the abdominal cavity. Her CA125 was significantly elevated. After discussion of the options of treatment, she elected for carboplatin and docetaxel. She had a partial response and did have persistent disease, which was greater than two centimeters, but a CA125 that had, almost, uh, that had normalized. At that moment, at that time, we discussed with her the options of therapy. She led, elected to proceed with rucaparib maintenance therapy. During that time, she experienced the toxicity of anemia, down to about seven. Uh, we managed that by interrupting the dose and then dose reducing from 600 down to 500 milligrams. When we discussed the options of treatment for her recurrence, we looked at individualizing care for this patient. There are multiple options of treatment. The first thing we discussed is should we proceed with surgical excision of her recurrent disease? The recent desktop study that has been reported showed a progression-free survival improvement, but overall survival has not been reported. GOG 213, Dr. Robert Coleman is the PI on, we expect to report out at ASCO with regards to the surgical question. Now, as we look at these options, we look to see how, where her disease is. We're more apt to consider surgery the longer she is from her chemotherapy or completing her chemotherapy and the more focal the disease. In this patient, that she's approximately a year and a half and she had multifocal disease, and because of her other comorbidities, which we really didn't just discuss, the options were made that we thought the surgery would not benefit her, and we proceeded directly to chemotherapy, somewhat because she was quite symptomatic also. The options are really platinum doublets, and you can utilize Paclis, uh, Pegle liposomal doxorubicin with carboplatin versus Gemzar as the Ocean's uh, uh, protocol, as well as platinum and paclitaxel. This patient had pre-existing neuropathy that, from her initial paclitaxel, so she elected for docetaxel. The other options are for maintenance therapy. With regards to maintenance therapy, we have observation, thus not maintenance therapy. Because she did have a partial response and persistent disease, it'd be very reasonable to continue her chemotherapy. Also, bevacivimab is approved for platinum-sensitive maintenance therapy plus treatment. She had already had bevacivimab, so for that reason, we did not proceed at this time. The other option then are PARP inhibitors. PARP inhibitors are indicated in maintenance of platinum sensitive disease. Now, when we look at the options of platinum sensitive maintenance, and we've now taken a BEV off the table because of her previous exposure, we are then deciding between which one of the three agents we are available. And you really need to look at the individual patient to make this decision. The best data on bulky disease, which we refer to as disease greater than two centimeters, is from the Arial 3 protocol. Those patients were allowed to go on to trial even though they had disease greater than two centimeters on the CAT scan, but they did have to normalize their CA125. When we look at the, those options, the best data on those patients with bulky disease would be rucaparib in this instance.